All right, so if we take the derivative of the original function, we got s prime of t equals, it'd be 48 minus 32t. And we're taking that derivative on part a because we want to find a velocity. So we could set that up as our velocity function. Trying to find the velocity at t equals <coughs> 3 seconds. I'll take three, simply plug in. Velocity of three seconds is going to equal 48 minus 32 times three. Is there a t by 48? Yeah, when we start with the original function there is, but when we take the derivative, t is going to drop. So 48 minus uh, 96 here, right? I mean negative 48. That's our velocity, negative 48 feet per second. Okay, on part B, we're asked about a position. We're asked how high this object is going to go. How high is the ball going to go? So. If we want to figure out how high it's going to go, we need to plug in to the original function. So we need to use s of t somehow, but we need a time when this ball is reaching its highest point. So we need something to plug in here. As far as how we're going to find that time, well, we're going to use the opposite function in this problem. That's the one that represents the velocity. That's the derivative. We're going to go back, take the derivative, which was 48 minus 32t, and we're going to set that equal to 0, because when this ball reaches its highest point, it needs to change direction, so it's going to stop. It's going to change direction, velocity be 0. If you solve this for t, Well, let's see here. If I divide negative 32 over to negative 48, we're going to get 1.5. So 1.5 seconds. 1.5 is going to be what we plug into the original function to give us that height. So 1.5 goes into the original function, replacing t. We've got 48 times 1.5 minus 16 times 1.5 squared. What's that come out to be? What was it again? 36. So 36 feet high. Okay. Moving on to part C. Talking about a velocity here on part C. So we're going to need a time to plug into our velocity function, which is the derivative here, right? So S prime of some time. How we're going to find that time? We're going to use the opposite function, which would be the original function here, the 48t minus 16t squared. When it hits the ground, the original function, which represents the height of this object, well, that height would be 0, so we set this equal to 0. And Solve for t. Solving for t, we could uh, do a little factoring here. We could take, looks like a 16t out. We take a 16t out. Um, taking the 16t out, you're left with be 3 minus t. That all equals 0. So t is going to be one of two things. t is going to be, <coughs> from this factor, it's going to be 0 seconds. So that's going to be where we're starting at ground level. Makes sense. And then t from the second expression is going to be 3 seconds. So we're taking 3. We're plugging in over here. Of course, if you go back to part A, we've already done that. So going back and looking at this calculation here, velocity of 3 seconds, we know we're going to get negative 48 feet per second how fast it's going when it hits the ground.
All right, trying to sketch out what's happening here, and this has happened a lot to us on these related rates problems. When we sketch something out, usually a right triangle relationship is formed. You've got this genius. He's down here, we'll say that's his tooth. He has tied off this rubber band above him to the garage door opener, which as we consider that distance up to the garage door opener, you got to ask yourself on these related rates problem, is that distance fixed? If it is, assign the value. If it isn't, assign a variable. Is that distance fixed? It is, right? It's three feet above him. That distance is not going to change. Now, what's happening to that rubber band will change, but that will change as the garage door opener starts to move and the pain sets in. So as this distance changes from where the rubber band is tied off to the uh, garage door opener, we move out this direction, we assign a variable here because we know that will vary. <coughs> and this rubber band, well, it starts to stretch out. So we'll let this distance represent how it's stretching out. And since that's changing over time, we'll assign that a variable. There's your right triangle relationship. From this right triangle relationship, we set up an equation that brings together all the variables. So Pythagorean theorem, we'd say x squared plus 3 squared equals y squared. Your goal is to first get an equation. Once you get that equation, next thing you do, you take the derivative of that equation with respect to time. So I take the derivative of x squared, I get 2x. I took the derivative of x with respect to time, so I assign the dx dt expression there. <coughs> the uh, 3 squared, that's 9, that's a constant, derivative is 0, so that goes away. That equals, on the other side, real similar idea, you got 2y here, dy dt. Okay, now let's, uh, let's go back and think about what values we can plug in. Uh, these other numbers that are given says the garage door opener moves the chain at 0.4 feet per second. Okay, so the 0.4 feet per second, that is a rate. If that's how quickly the garage door opener is moving, well, let's see, this is the side that represents the distance that the garage door is traveling, right? So the <coughs> speed that would go with this variable, since that's an x, would be the dx dt notation. This right here is going to be 0.4 feet per second. It says how fast is the rubber band expanding when it is stretched to a length of 5 feet? So the length of the rubber band being y right here we know is going to be 5 feet. So that gives us this variable. Do we know what x is going to be? There we go. If we have any other variables that we, we need here to play with, in this case we need x, what we do is we take the y value at this moment in time, which is going to be 5, and we plug back in to the original equation to figure out x. Now, if you plug 5 back in here, We've got this Pythagorean triple we're working with, right? You got your five over here, you got your three here, so x is going to be just four. Okay. So plugging in what we know, two times x, x is four. <coughs> dx dt is that rate of 0 0.4. That equals two times y, which is five. And then we've got this dy dt. We need to have one variable expression left. Since it's a related rates problem, it's going to be one of these derivative notations. And that should represent what we need to solve for. It says, how fast is the rubber band expanding? Remember, y was the side associated with that expansion. So it should make sense that dy dt is left over. <coughs> All right, if we uh, calculate this out, dy dt is going to equal 
the 2 times the 4 times the 0 0.4 divided by the 2 times the 5. So what do we get? 0 0.32. 0 0.32 feet per second. Okay, so since we, we know the formula that we've got to apply to this problem, what's nice is we don't have to go through, you know, diagramming this all out, although you could, and then setting up an equation. You just take the equation, you run with it. Once you have your equation, you take your derivative with respect to time. So working off the formula here, taking the derivative of A, that's going to be 1. We took the derivative of A, we did so with respect to time, so it's 1 dA dt. That equals, all right, you got pi r squared over here. Pi is just a number, so we're taking the derivative with respect to r at this point. Bring down the 2. You got 2 pi r to the first. We just worked off the r, so we need to apply dr dt here. You're taking your derivative with respect to time. Now we're ready to plug in some information. Plugging in what we know, let's see says circular wave moves out from the point of impact at a rate of six inches per second. Okay, so it's a rate. We've got two potential rate expressions here. Which one is the six going to be assigned to? dr dt, because we're talking about the radius changing here. So this one's going to be six. And then it says it's got a radius of two inches, right? So obviously r is going to be two. Plugging in what you know, we don't know dA dt, but that's all right because the question has to do with how fast the area enclosed is changing. That's going to equal 2 times pi times the radius of 2 times dr dt, which is 6. We want to calculate that out. We could leave it in terms of pi. That'd be all right. Um, that'd be, what, 24 pi? Since we're talking about the area here, the rate for the radius changing was inches per second, so this would be square inches per second. If you want to leave it in terms of pi, okay. If you want to multiply it out, that makes sense as well. But either or is your answer. 